And so we're, we're in this season right now where scripturally we are going from the time of Purim, which is remember the days of Esther when God brought justice to the Jewish people. Esther wrote a new decree. And as she wrote a new decree, suddenly the decree of the enemy got broken and they were able to prosper. They were able to fight back. Amen. That's the celebration of Purim. And it literally says in Esther chapter 9 that all the plans of the enemy boomeranged back on his own head. So we're in a boomerang season right now. Now, it's really easy to think enemy and we think the devil, right? I hope you're not thinking of a person. People aren't our enemies, right? Okay, but what are some enemies that we're facing? How about fear? What else? What is it? Corruption. What else? Anger? Yeah, what else? Lies? Sickness? Ridicule? Come on. Lack? Limitation? Shame? Come on, all these things are our enemies. And I'm telling you, everything the enemy is throwing against you, God's boomeranging it back on the head of the enemy. Deuteronomy 23.5 declares the curse is turned to a blessing for you because God loves you. I want you to put your hand on your chest and say, he loves me. So we're in this time right now between when the Jews celebrate Purim and when they celebrate Passover. And we know Passover was when the death angel passed over and God delivered the children of Israel out of 435 years of Egyptian bondage and released them from captivity and brought them into a new place of freedom. But you know what? When you bring that into the New Testament, you understand that everything Jesus did was about bringing us into into a divine reversal encounter. Come on, we were all alienated from God by our sin, right? And Jesus came and by the power of his death, burial, and resurrection, Jesus made a way where there seemed to be no way. Come on, how many believe what we were singing this morning? He made a way where there seemed to be no way and he actually reconciled us to God removed our sin, removed our wrongdoing. Come on, if you're still in a place where you're struggling with sin, I encourage you to repent. That, and, that's, and as you repent, there's a power of God that will bring you into a place of freedom from those life-controlling sins. Amen? Not only that, it actually says in Hebrews that now we can come boldly before his throne of grace to find help in our time of need. So it's not just a matter of you're released from prison, now go live on the streets. It's now you're released from the prison of your sin. Come live in the palace. Come live in a throne room. Come live in a place of abundance. Come live in a place where the victory is always yours. Come on. We need to understand the mentality that we need to have is that the gospel message is all about divine reversal, about God turning things around for us. Jesus demonstrated this in everything he did. When he encountered, encountered sick people, he brought them a divine reversal and brought them into health. Come on, I'm telling you, the same Jesus that walked the streets 2,000 years ago, that walked the streets of Jerusalem, is walking here today, is living here today. And the same way that he delivered people from demons 2,000 years ago, he's here to deliver us, to heal us, to even raise the dead. I will tell you the story, because we have a lot of new people here. When we moved here 36 years ago this year, this surrounding area was bound by two things, poverty and witchcraft. Between Phillips Inlet Bridge and Sandestin Traffic Light, there were 10 identifiable cult groups in this area. We had Satanists crucifying animals um, along the bay. We had multiple witches' covens. We had, Santer we had Santeria voodoo. We had pagans that were putting pagan altars everywhere. We had psychic healers, psychic gurus, Wicca. We, we had such crazy stuff. Some of the school teachers, I think Cecilia told me that they, the police did a, um, a seminar on how to recognize the signs of satanic ritualistic abuse. Do you remember that? And our schools. We only had one school south of the bay. But 
kids were being exposed to Satanism in this area. Yeah, Wicca was in all our schools proselytizing. It was crazy. This area was completely overrun by the spirit of witchcraft. Do you realize that? How many have been here longer than 30 years? I'm trying to look around to see. I know you have. My son's raising his hand. Thank you, son. <laughs> yes, Paul. That's right, Paul. Over here, yeah, the Ryan crowd, all of them. I don't know if you all remember that, but Seaside was a natural, national gathering, advertised place for witches to hold conventions. <laughs> and you know what? God took this little pioneering prophetic ministry and dropped us down into a land completely overrun by the spirit of witchcraft. And basically our prophecy was fight or die. We're still here. That's right. I mean, literally, we had decapitated animals thrown on our doorsteps. We had decapitated, we had sacrificial blood spilled around. I mean, it was crazy stuff, guys. Here, in the beautiful Santa Rosa Beach. Miracle Strip. Guess what? We had to say, not on our watch. Come on. If there's a curse operating, we have the power inside of us to destroy the curse. We walked this ground. We, we prayed over this ground. We walked up and down 30A before 30A was developed. We walked back in these neighborhoods before they were developed. And we prophesied over the ground. We prophesied over the land. And one by one, we started seeing those forces start to move out. I'm, I'm not making this up. I'm not making this up. This is the stuff that was here. It was entrenched. The other thing that was here was poverty. Wave your hand at me, those that were here for longer than, before 2000. Before year 2000. Y'all remember? <laughs> Highway 98 was a two-lane road. Businesses had a hard time thriving. People would build houses. They'd lose them. Poverty was entrenched. On the state scale of impoverished counties, there's 67 counties in Florida, the beginning of 2000, we were listed as number 64 out of 67. You'd never know that to look around today, right? It didn't just happen, guys. In the year 2000, the Lord gave us some strategies for how to pray over this area, not just to break witchcraft, but to break off poverty. And we called the church to fast and pray. We prayer walked. We did all kinds of prophetic things over the land. We, we, we began to, to decree things. One thing that we discovered is that our south of the bay, in our county record books up in Defeniac Springs, south of the bay, from back in the early part of the century, is called Poor Man's Island. How many know that was a decree written over our ground that was empowering some things to keep things in poverty? So when we found that out, we wrote a new decree. We said, we're going to be blessed. We're going to be highly favored. We're going to be a land of prosperity. And then God gave us the strategies for how to pray that in the, in the, in the mid part of 2000. By the end of 2002, we were not just the number one county in Florida, but we were the, the fastest growing real estate market in the entire continental United States. Y'all should have got excited about that. Okay, I'm, 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 I'm helping you to understand a reversal happened because people of faith rose up and said, we're going to start appropriating the principles of the kingdom of heaven. And we actually saw dramatic change happen in our area. It doesn't mean that, that the fight is over. As a matter of fact, we're going to do some more prayer walking this spring. Because understand this, if you get something cast out of you, how many know you got to keep free? So periodically, we just got to go out there and we got to make sure our land stays free. But there was transformation. Look at what it says. He, he went out there, he threw the salt in there, and he said, Thus says the Lord, I have healed this water from it. There will be no, no more death or barrenness. He began to, to make a decree. And it says, So the water remains healed unto this day, according to the word which Elisha spoke.